is the gospel message. Anybody, but that, but anybody that believes they can get people saved by cutting down preaching is wrong. You might get a big church, but it doesn't mean they're saved. You, get, you can get a lot of people in a church who play the right kind of music, get a bit of that music, get a bit of this music, get a bit of that music. You, you know, you're, you're, you're fill up a church the same as you fill up a nightclub. It doesn't mean they're saved. And that is what a lot of churches are doing today. They get the young, they, they, take, the, they take the music of the world, they bring it in the church, and they, get the, they bring the unsaved in and keep, and keep them unsaved. Because without the gospel, there is no salvation. And they're only saved by the gospel, but they never hear the gospel. <coughs> they cut down the time the preacher gets and increase the time the music is played. They've got the cart before the horse. Scripturally, it's wrong. Because God has chosen, the Bible says, the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach, not sing. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God has chosen for the preaching. So, Ephesians 2, 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereof. So we are reconciled to God by the cross. So we can see that salvation, the cross is very important mm -hmm. to our salvation. It is a belief in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, it's not just the death, it's the resurrection. We are saved by his life. If Jesus just died on the cross, we'd still be in our sins. He'd be forgiven corpses, but we are saved by his life. Colossians 1.20 And having made peace with the blood of his cross by him, to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So we have peace through the blood of the cross. Okay. There has, there has only ever been one way of salvation. Throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, there has only ever been one way of salvation, and that is the cross. I know that there is a doctrine called upward dispensationalism that teaches that there's seven dispensation and God has a different way of saving people for each dispensation. That's, that's false. God has only ever had one way of salvation. And in the Old Testament we see a looking forward to the cross. The Old Testament was types and foreshadows of the, of the cross that was yet to come and the ministry of Jesus. We look the difference is that you and I today, we look back mm -hmm. to the cross. Mm -hmm. And that is what we do when we take the communion service. We remember his death until he comes. Mm -hmm. So when we take the communion service, it's a reminder that he died, but it's a reminder that he's coming again. Mm -hmm. So it's a two-way thing on the communion service. We remember his death until he comes, First Corinthians tells us. So that's what we do. We, we look back to the cross. They look forward to the cross. But, but they were shadows. The shadows was a revelation. You see, if you look at, if you, if, 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 if the light was shining, you won't, won't see it now, but if the light was shining behind me, my shadow would be this way. The shadow is not me, but it's a revelation that I am coming. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament for the types and the shadows, the tabernacle, which we're going to teach on after I've finished theology, after I've finished <coughs> this man theology, I have got, I've got a model somewhere in the tabernacle. We are, um, they are shadows. There was a revelation that Christ is going to come. Every time the high priest, the tabernacle, the, the, the lambs, the goats, the offerings, they were shadows and types of the perfect sacrifice that was yet to come. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So there's only ever been one gospel. And we see that over and over again from the very time that Adam and Eve sinned, we see the revelation of that one gospel. You might, I've got some scripture, Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Now, last week, when we take a look at hamartiology, one of the things that we find out was that man is dead in trespasses and sins. So man does not see God. Now, I know that a lot of the emphasis today is seek the Lord. Well, the Bible says, in Romans chapter 3, there are none that seeketh after him, no, not one. 
And I hear someone say, I found the Lord. No, you didn't. He weren't lost. He found you. He found you. You weren't even looking. You were dead. The Bible said you were dead in trespassing the sins. Dead men don't look. Dead men don't search. <laughs> and the Bible says there are none that seek after him. Sometimes I go down the street and I get people ask, I get people seeking directions. But they're all alive. Now, I've never had a dead man come up to me and say, how do I get an apron stone? <laughs> we were dead in trespasses and sins. So we weren't seeking, but the Bible said about Jesus that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. When Lazarus was dead, he weren't seeking Jesus. Jesus came to him. Had Lazarus come forth. And Jesus found you. He found Amen. you. You didn't find him because he weren't lost. He found you. And he found me. Amen. We weren't even looking for him. We was on our way to a lost eternity. Alienated from God. We didn't want the things of God. And God found us. And the reason that you called him, and you called upon him to save you, but only because he first called you. We love him because he first loved us. Lazarus went Lazarus followed Jesus. But only he only but he wasn't following Jesus until Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And then when he came forth they lose to be followed Jesus. And that's the way we were. We weren't following. Now I know that and some people say, What about the old testament? It says, Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Well, context is very important when you're understanding the Bible. When Jesus said, when, in the Old Testament, where he says, Seek in the Lord while he may be found, that's not talking about the unsaved. He's talking about backslidden Israel. Israel had fallen away from God. It, 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 that invitation wasn't to the Philistines. It wasn't to, the, it wasn't to the, 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 the Amalekites or anyone else. It was a backslidden nation. Context is very important. I had someone the other day and said, Re Revelation 3.20, we have to open the door. You know the scripture? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Why is it people only read one verse of, one verse of scripture, forget the context, and build a doctrine up on it? Revelations chapter 2 and 3 are, talk are written to the seven churches. They weren't written to the unsaved. They were written to the seven churches. And if we take a look, I don't turn to it now, but in your own time, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Go back a few verses. It says, Unto the church of Laodicea, write these things. And then, it's, and then it rebukes the church of Laodicea. And it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's not the, do it's not the heart of the sinner. It's the church, the backslidden church. He was the church that was gathering, gathering together, saying, Hallelujah, praise God, God, we love you. And Jesus, and Jesus wasn't even there. He was standing outside knocking. You know, religion keeps Jesus out. Dead religion keeps Jesus out. And we can have all the shouting and jumping and rolling on the floor and laughing our heads off and that kind of thing. And Jesus is standing outside saying, Let me in, let me in. <laughs> It's like the it's like the person that's uh, it's like the it's like the the lad once that went came home and he got on his knees and said, Lord, Heavenly Father, I don't know what's wrong. I've been trying to be accepted by this church for years, and they won't accept me. And Jesus said to him, I've been trying to be accepted by that same church. They won't they won't, they won't accept me either. Okay, so we saw this. We saw we saw in the story of Adam and Eve, didn't we? That when Adam and Eve sinned, there was no repentance. We don't see no repentance. Not one time did Adam and Eve say they were sorry. They lied. They said we were naked. They weren't. They had just made they had just made garments of fig leaves. They had just made a fig leaf covering and went and hid. They had a garment of fig leaves on, and they said we're naked. They lied, and then they, and then, and, and then they said, oh, and then Adam blames God, the woman that you gave me, 